Uh, section 4.4, properties of protons, neutrons, and electrons. We talked in lecture about Rutherford and um, Thompson, about the uh, plum pudding model, and about how they determined that there were electrons and that there were protons and stuff inside. So now we're going to look at the properties of those. They're called subatomic particles. Sub means below because they are below the atomic size. So the three important particles are protons, neutrons, and electrons. Um, the protons and the neutrons um, have very similar masses. They're essentially the same size. If we look at this table, we see that a proton has a mass of 1.6767, can't read that, 1.67262 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. And the neutron is almost the same. Okay, it's over in the fourth place that it starts to differ. So they're very, very close in size. Now this other column here with mass AMU, what is that? AMU. AMU is the atomic mass unit, um, and the definition of it is kind of crazy sounding. It's one twelfth the mass of a carbon atom that has six protons and six neutrons in it. You're like, okay. Essentially what that means is the atomic mass unit is very close in size to the mass of one proton or the mass of one neutron. And so, you know, ballpark you can kind of think of it that way. So we see the mass of the proton is 1.0073 atomic mass units. The neutron is 1.0087. <coughs> really, really close. For most purposes, the same. The charge on them is significant. The charge on the proton is plus 1. The proton is positive. The charge on the neutron is neutral. Neutron, neutral. It has a zero, zero charge. And then we have the electron. And the electron is much smaller in mass than the protons and the neutrons. It's easier to look at the atomic mass units. It's 0 .00055 compared to them being 1. So the mass is much smaller. The charge is negative 1. So what do you need to know from this table? Well, um, you need to know the names of these guys. Proton, neutron, electron. Those are the three subatomic particles. You need to know their approximate masses in atomic mass units. So if I asked you the mass of a proton, I'd, a I'd expect you to say one atomic mass unit. The neutron is one. The electron is essentially zero. Understand that it does have mass, but it's so small that it really doesn't matter. And then you should know their charges. Protons are positive 1, neutrons are 0, electrons are minus 1. So you should memorize that information. This is kind of an interesting picture from your book. I think visual images are really helpful. I'm a visual person, and I need to be able, at least in my mind, to see something for me to understand it and remember it. So if, if the proton was the size of a baseball, if it had the mass of a baseball, an electron would be about the size of a grain of rice. So there's the picture. Here's the, um, the grain of rice way down here. Okay, That's a lot smaller. And that gives you an idea of the proportions in the atom. So in an atom, you've got lots of those baseballs all crammed together in the nucleus. And then you've got an equal number to the protons of electrons outside in this big nothingness. So if you do the math, the, the proton's almost eight almost 2,000 times as big as an electron. So we say that the, the mass of the electron is negligible. It just really doesn't matter at all. Okay, so solid matter. We mentioned in the earlier section that matter is mostly empty space, and that's a little mind-boggling and trippy, perhaps. 
But here's another good illustration from your textbook. This is, you know, old-fashioned metal jungle gym. Most of that is empty space, right? If you look at this inset here, you know, we've got the metal bars, and in between the metal bars, there's nothing. But if you look at a lot of that from a distance, it begins to look more solid, doesn't it? Like in the book, they talk about, well, if you had a jungle gym that was as big as a football field and as tall as a football field, and you were up in an airplane looking at it, it would look like a solid object. You know, it depends a little bit on your perspective, too. If you're looking straight on so that you can see through those holes, then it would look more open. But if you're at an angle, they kind of cover each other up, and it looks solid. That's a little bit like what matter is. It's kind of like an open cage structure. So there's a lot of empty space in there and yet it's firm and rigid. And if you took two of those and tried to smash them into each other, you couldn't get them to pass through each other even though they're both mostly empty space. right? So when you take your knuckles and wrap on the desk, it's like banging two of those jungle gyms together. They're not going to pass into each other. Um, this slide was put in the earlier section by the person who put these slides together originally, and I realized it didn't belong there. It belongs over here. Um, so we've already talked about this, but just real quick. Electrical charge. Opposites attract. Um, that's this illustration here. Opposites attract, and like charges repel each other. And when we have a plus one and a minus one, and we put them together, they're attracted to each other, and then they have overall an, a zero charge. They have no charge. Okay.